Okay, so I'll, I'll hand over now to Chris. Um, Chris is an early adopter and beta tester of Storm on a Functional. He's been using it for six or more months, and I first saw it when he demonstrated it to me when I met him in June of this year at a Vivid meeting. He's um, very keen to share some of the experiences that he's had, and he's uh, very, very keen to demonstrate this new product. So without any further ado, I'll pass over to you, Chris. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. Thanks, guys, for having me here today. So as Richard pointed out, um, I was an early adopter to Stormrunner Functional through beta testing, going through different cycles, checking out new features as they come, waiting patiently for new features to try out. And I want to give a chance to give everyone in the community a chance to you know, check that out. So we're going to start with a couple of quick slides, and then we're going to get into the actual product itself. So why is something like Stormrunner Functional enticing to me? Well, the web is a pain, uh, devices are a pain, and functional automators like myself, we are lazy. So um, I don't mean that to be negative, it's just uh, take it from a sense of lazy equaling, uh, trying to be efficient, not wanting to do the same thing over and over again, and not wanting to get hit up with um, obstruction after obstruction in your workplace. So let's look and see how these problems of mine are solved with Stormrunner Functional. So how can it help? Stormrunner Functional brings uh, a one-stop shopping capability of testing to folks who are doing anything web or mobile related. Uh, we can explore, we can execute, we can report, we can record both web and mobile. From the exploration point, uh, we can choose any device, any OS and browser combination, and all of these things are available to us on demand. Um, for those of you not in, not in the way of Stormrunner Functional, I probably should have started with this. Stormrunner Functional is a automated and manual functional testing tool provided by Microfocus that is 100% cloud-based, which is very cool because cloud-based provides us the infrastructure and the capability to do things without having to have any on-premise um, initiatives. So if you're like me and it takes weeks and months in provisioning of servers to get new features and capabilities into your environment, uh, that can be rather difficult. But to have it all available to you in the cloud and, and available today it is very, very nice. Um, execution, we can execute cross-browser. We can execute with various screen resolutions. And, and I have much better renderations of these screenshots in the demo, so don't try to breathe in. They're very difficult. Um, and you can go across operating systems. So everything that you would normally need in a web testing tool is available to you in the cloud with your existing micro-focus automation tools. So what can it execute? Remotely, meaning from my desktop, pointing these to the cloud saying, hey, cloud, run my tests. I can do UFT to storm run a functional. I could do lean FT to storm run a functional. And it's very interesting that Richard was talking about the Mercury days because now I think there is no more selenium solution for mercury poisoning of days of old. Selenium and mercury can live together. You can run your selenium tests alongside your what was once a mercury tool, then HP, HP, and now Microfocus, and they all work together. And it works really well. Um, if you don't want to run them from your computer, you want to go full standalone, uh, you can upload them. You can upload your UFT. You can upload your mean FT, and you can upload your Selenium tests all into the cloud and run them fully from the cloud. There's a lot of great reporting and metrics in the dashboard where you can see your trending, your results, what's going on now, and other interesting dashboards. Um, newer features being added are analytics, uh, so you can tie into your Google Analytics and be more intelligent when choosing your tests. Um, in your testing tool dashboard is now your analytics, which will give you the capability to properly choose what browser combinations, resolution combinations, OS combinations based on your end users. Uh, also in the cloud, which I don't necessarily have time to go into demo today, you have the ability to record. So if you want to do a fast script, if you want to have a tester or someone in the business go in and record a script and provide you a base script, 
uh, for any of you that are familiar with Sprinter, think of it as Sprinter for the web and the cloud, but with a whole lot more features. Um, we can record a test and have either a script for it or have a full-blown automated test at the end of that session. And all these capabilities are available for mobile too. So iOS devices, Android devices, either in the cloud or actually tethered to your computer. So now let's just jump into the demo. All right, so first let's, we're going to start off with the dashboard. So from the dashboard, what do we have? We have the ability for a quick start, gives you the ability to get into your mobile, get into your web scripting, get into your automated testing and exploratory testing, all from a very simple jump point. Um, we also have understanding of our consumption because the licensing is parallel. We can see our analytics. We can see all of the great features that are available to us on this dashboard, um, trending and such. And you can even add your own fun logo at the top. Now what's exciting to me is I can integrate this with my existing microfocus tools. So we use unified functional testing for all of our stuff. We now have the ability to extend it into the cloud for testing. Again, really, really exciting for me. Think about all of your web woes and having to have machines on camps with different browsers, different OSs, figuring out the right screen resolutions if that's a problem for you, just maintaining these things and having to have them sitting around and either just having the bare minimum because that's all that the budget allows in terms of resources or having this plethora of virtual machines that you've got to mess around with, God forbid they're real machines because that would be a lot of heat having to have these all sitting around and having to work with them, that's all now in the cloud capable for you. So it's as simple as going in and setting up your Stormrunner functional account in your unified tester. Uh, they provide you with a client ID, you connect it, and it's a piece of cake to do. When you go into record and run settings, you can choose Stormrunner functional, uh, just like you would normally choose your local browser, but choose one from the, from the cloud. You are presented with a variety of OSs, a variety of browsers, uh, including even some beta versions of browsers, which is kind of cool. And you're also provided with a variety of resolutions that you're able to use for your test. So I built a simple test here for the Vivid website. Um, don't gauge me on my coding. It was just a really quick test for the purpose of a demo. And this is going to run in the cloud. So you can see it's starting up in UFT. And if I jump back to my browser, uh, you'll see, hopefully in the upper right, you'll see a little thing denoting that the test is running. Now this test is going to take about a minute or so to run. And instead of sitting here and humming the Jeopardy song to you, I'm going to do a fast exploratory test. We're going to multitask. As I mentioned, this is a one-stop shopping for all of your testing needs. So what about your manual testers? What about the need to just latch on to a browser that you may not have access to? Uh, Stormrunner Functional does provide that for you in addition. So here I chose Windows 7. Chrome and a particular resolution that uh, I wanted to test with. So I've set that up and I'm going to start the browser. Now what's really cool is what's happening here is a machine is being provisioned for me and it's being set up with the parameters I chose and now I have my browser available to me. So I'm going to go to our corporate website independenthealth.com and I'm just going to do a really simple test. Now, while this page is loading, something important to note is I mentioned a machine is being created for you. you know, if you're in an environment where um, data at rest is a potential issue or PHI or other things, the machine being created for you during your test is destroyed, which is great because um, I don't have to worry about my data sitting around you know, ready for someone to access. So back to the test. We're going to do a simple test to find a doctor. We're just going to click something from our quick list of um, popular searches, select an I don't know for a plan just for a quick sake of a test, and do a fast search. Now what's neat is there's a storyboard being built for me as I'm clicking through this. So notice that uh, all the steps that I'm doing are being recorded here. So I can go back interacting with the web browser and I can maybe change and expand the radius of the search that I did. And when I expand that, all this is being recorded in that, in that uh, storyboard there. So what if I want to you know, maybe take proof of something that I did? So I can take a screenshot of that and I can you know, highlight things with a little basic markup. 
sorry, that was a really dismal circle, but you get the point that you can mark things up. And what's neat is I can save that, and that is going to be readily available in that storyboard. I can even add comments in there, maybe talking about what I did in this particular test. Now, when I'm done with my test, I can say done, and I can mark it as passed, failed. But when I save this test, those results are going to be available to me. So I can look at my latest runs, and I can see the results that were available to me from my past run. So I can see here all my different steps. I can see what environment I chose, Windows 7, Chrome 62. It was run in the cloud. I spent a minute 46 on it, and there's my eight steps with my comments at the bottom. And if you notice, there's a little photograph icon by step eight. If I click it, I can see the screenshot that I put there. Um, you know, I believe the possibilities are endless with the exploratory capabilities, and it really does bring some really great capabilities here. Um, if you were to do a recorded automation script from the tool, it would look the same in terms of the interface that you would use or just create a, a report. So now what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the results for the test that we did, because we see that our test is now done. We can see recently finished is our Vivid Quick Test. And we're going to look at the results. Here we had Windows 10, Firefox 57, and uh, 16 by 9 resolution. So Chris, here we, we have a question. We, we have a question about what, uh, which may be appropriate to answer at this time. It says, are the UFT scripts sure. running headless? I thought since you're now looking at the UFT results, might be a good time to answer. Yeah, absolutely. So these are actually not being headless um, in the sense of if you've ever run a UFT test, and I apologize, I didn't see the question. I have my uh, video full screen here for demonstration purposes. If you've ever run a UFT test where you've pointed it at a machine and said, hey, run on this machine, maybe use ALM as an interface for that. But that machine exists. It has a real desktop. Uh, it probably triggers it either through some RDP connection or something else. It would run that way. These are actually being run on real browsers, on real machines. So no different than just a moment ago when during an exploratory session, I started up a virtual, it is a virtual machine, uh, started up a machine, it had the particular operating system, the particular browser that I sought out, and the screen resolution that I wanted, that same thing is happening when I'm running these tests. Um, in fact, uh, to, to kind of demonstrate that, when you are looking at the results, you'll actually see a screenshot for every interaction that is being done. It actually takes a snapshot for those interactions. So as it's doing the click, as it's doing the checkpoints and different clicks and interactions with your website, those are being, those screenshots are being captured, um, probably because you don't have hands-on to that machine like you would in, in a world where you have the machine on-prem. Uh, it gives you the insight into that. So these are all real uh, operating systems, the proper browser uh, actually being run through there. Um, I mean, they don't offer the capability to RDP into it while it's running, but these are real um, browsers. There are headless possibilities with UFT, but those would be on-prem and, and likely discussion for a later date. And if someone's interested in, uh, in that, uh, please fill out our survey with, with some details on desires of of headless interaction with uh, UFT. Thanks, uh, Certainly. Uh, looking back at the results, um, every page that you visit as a, you can see a little thing in there that had the number of milliseconds. So it's kind of nifty. They put some client-side performance metrics in the result sets here. As we look through the results, you're thinking, well, these don't feel like UFT results, but if I go into the details step by step, I can actually see a lot of the properties and values that we're accustomed to working with in object repositories and within the um, user interface. And we can see that those screenshots, we can pop them up, we can see more details on them uh, with, without any issue. So, all right, we're thinking, that's great and all, but that's just single-threaded. How can this do more for us? So something great that we can do that was introduced just recently. So with the combination of Stormer Functional and the latest version of UFT 1402, there's a new feature available for us. It's Upload Test. 
we can either upload a test that's existing on our file system, or in this case, I'm going to upload the uh, test that we've opened. So choose the Upload Active Test, do a quick save, give it a name, and we're going to upload it. This is now sending that test, I believe packaged, probably zipped, I didn't look into the details, but it's sending that off to StormRunner Functional for our consumption. Once it's done, it tells us where it's at. Uh, I don't need to click on the link. I already have StormRunner Functional open, so I'm going to switch back over to it. And we are going to just dive in and use that. So I'm going to make, make a new automation test, give it a name, and type of the name, give it a proper name. And then we're going to choose the script that we just put up there. So we'll go and look. We see the UFT icon there, so we know that's our UFT script. It's a little tiny triangle, hard to see on this screen, but uh, trust me, it is there. We're going to choose it. If there were multiples we wanted to choose, we could. But for time's sake, we're just going to do the one. Now, after we chose the script, we need to choose the environments. Uh, my, my instance has six concurrent capabilities right now. Uh, let's load up five browsers at random, and we'll just kind of plug some in there between Windows 10, 8.1, and Windows 7. Do have the ability to do Linux, and I've heard that Mac is coming soon. Uh, stay tuned for listening to Vivid and Microfocus for dates on Mac OS capabilities. Which wouldn't that be cool to send tests to Mac and Linux when I have a Windows PC and don't have access to those things? Pretty groovy. So choose a couple browsers. Um, I kind of like the 16 by 9 resolution. You can choose any combinations that you want. Um, but after I chose those five, I'm going to say run. And what's great is we've now just created our own mini horse race. The horses are off, they're running, and all five of these are now going to be running at once. So go. So it's initializing them. Initializing is prepping the test and sending it off to those machines. So if we look, we have one test that is running, but we can go back to our home screen and see that we now have five of our six um, parallel threads being run. Uh, for fun's sake, we're going to add a widget for our newly created test. Just start typing it in and select the test that you want. And we can see that that test is running, so we will get live details about that test if needed. And we can even see in the test runs that it's running there too. Uh, sorry to kind of fly through this, but there's a whole bunch of awesome functionality here. So again, to make the most use of our time, let's just pop over to Mobile Lab. Um, Mine are currently offline. I don't have mobile in my instance at the very moment, but I can assure you that we have done a lot of work with mobile. Works out really great, uh, both iPhone or iOS and Android. And I even did a trial with tethering in an old Samsung Galaxy of myself through a USB cable to my laptop, and that's that SCHI535. Uh, yes, folks, that's an old Galaxy. Um, but it worked great, tethered into my laptop, and it became part of the Cognizant Cloud that is StormRunner functional. So you can actually expand your devices uh, that way as well. So you can see you would set up a mobile session in the same way you would do with a web session. Um, and for time's sake, we're going to kind of bump this for a minute and not go through it in full. I do know there's a variety of videos out there from Microfocus and and they do work in the easy way that, that they have illustrated. So uh, it is the way it works. Uh, you can even attach apps to a mobile device, which is really great. And if anyone's used Mobile Center before, this is basically all the functioning of Mobile Center in the cloud, again, without having to set up the on-campus, on-premise Mobile Center functionality. So while I was kind of going through that little fast thing, the tests are done. All five are done. Uh, amazingly, they passed. I say amazingly because it means I, I must still know how to script something. And let's look at those results. So we can quick easily see all five instances there. Uh, they're grouped by operating system and browser. They're all in the green. Maybe I should have made one fail for fun's sake, but I didn't think of that. And we can see all the statistics for every page load. So those numbers across are our steps, and each bar represents a different OS browser combination. So it's kind of neat. We get a little bit of uh, performance data here. We can do a neat thing where we can do comparison and compare two different test runs. So notice as I choose the browser, the environments will change. 
and we can scroll through and, and compare them. So if you had uh, an instance that was failing in one browser and, and not another, you could look and see uh, what the actual behavior was of those. You kind of bounce through the steps and they keep them in sync and it's, it's quite nice to have that capability to see. And again, there would be screenshots for each and every one of these. So there it is. That is my fast 10-minute walkthrough of Stormer Functional. Um, again, upload capabilities, just to reiterate that, you can upload LeanFT, UFT, and indeed Selenium web tests to this platform. Um, I didn't want to embarrass myself. I haven't written Selenium in a couple of years, so we did not prep one of those for today. Um, jumping back to our presentation, that, that's the end of the demo. And uh, thanks for checking it out with us. Thanks very much, for Chris. That, uh, for that, Chris, it was uh, it was it was excellent. I'm always amazed whenever you demo um, Storm and a Functional, just how passionate and excited you are about it. So it was really good to hear that again. Thank you. Um, I'm quite sure that that's likely to generate a whole load more questions and a whole load more interest. And so if people do want um, particularly SRF demos or anything like that, or anything that we've touched on. If there's something that is a, a burning topic of interest for you, um, please let us know. Answer our survey, and if you want to either speak or suggest somebody else who's a good speaker that we may not yet have approached, then please let us know, because we'd like to make these sessions as, as interactive and as member-driven as possible. So please let us know if you have any additional suggestions. Just to make you aware of one other webinar, there's a Vivid webinar tomorrow, which you may not have heard of, uh, around uh, data center automation. That's at um, 1700 Central European, I think. That's an hour different to today, isn't it? But um, yeah, it's an hour earlier than today. But if you want to register for that, that, that link um, is on our website. Uh, and, and as we've already mentioned, if you could complete the uh, short survey, that would be great. And we'd, that we'd like to uh, take feedback from you and, uh, and, and, and make sure that you get what you want from these uh, presentations. We're aware that uh, two of you who uh, made comments said that you're having difficulties watching those videos. That shouldn't be an issue in our next platform. As I mentioned earlier, uh, this webinar platform is being upgraded in January to HTML5, so there will be no requirement for Flash, which is a, a big improvement. And it will mean that we'll be able to do live demos rather than having to show you a video. So it will be easier for us to do a handoff between multiple presenters doing live interactions. So uh, that's something to look forward to in January. We'll send you details of the uh, survey, so if you can uh, complete that, let us know the sort of thing you're looking for, then that would be great. Um, and, and that's it. So thank you for joining us. We hope to see you soon. Um, if you feel that this content would be of use to your friends or colleagues, please let them know. And be sure to share the links or interact with us on Twitter or our other social media feeds. So thank you once again, and goodbye. <laughs>